Greetings everyone! Welcome in this new episode of Into the Mud Hole. It's been a little while and I'm very glad to see you here again. Today we'll explore how the mud hole evolved from having a skin front to a wooden front. We will go through a bit of history and see the main characters that made this transition possible. Let's get started! First of all, we will need to set a societal as well as cultural context to talk about the evolution of the instrument. I will deliberately avoid getting too deep into politics and will try to stay focused on the music and the murderhood. We could say that the music culture in Mongolia was, from all times, mostly regional, related to different ethnic groups and often performed by amateurs. It was very participative and usually connected to the natural and spiritual surroundings of the performers. After being occupied for almost three centuries by the Qing dynasty, Mongolia started a revolution to claim its independence on the 29th of December 1911. It is only on the 11th of July 1921 that the People's Revolution will be set with the help of the Soviet Red Army. This will start a new era that will be marked with gradual change on every aspect of Mongolian society and art and culture. In that time, the relationship between the Soviet Union and Mongolia grew closer. And of course, with it, the influence of the Soviet culture and philosophy on the education and the music. From that would come an expansion of the school systems, of the theaters and of other cultural institutions. By the mid to late 50s, the increased attention to professionalism within the new musical culture accelerated the assimilation of European classical performing traditions, especially the playing of violin or violoncello, as well as the formation of small ensembles. At that time, one dominant teacher, performer of the European violoncello as well as Murhorch, Jamian Komdorch, incorporated elements of classical methodology into his teaching and playing of the murderer. These included the holding of the instrument and its bow, the fingering of the notes on the strings, and the moving of the bow over the strings, all of which resembled those of the violoncello. Jamian also developed a series of fundamental exercises that he used in teaching the murderer, which became later the standard method book for the instrument named Murhur Sorak Karinavlak or Handbook for the Study of the Murhur, which was published in 1978. The professionalization of the national music required that the traditional instruments be redesigned and in some instances newly created to adapt to the changing performance context and aesthetic of the Mongolian music culture. For example, the Ikhor introduced in the 60s is literally a very large murhor that imitates the thumb of the European contrabass violin. Jamian had initiated something of a mini-revolution in the teaching and performance of the murhor in the 50s. It is quite interesting that the redesign of the instrument came in the late 60s at the initiative of a Russian violin maker during one of the numerous cultural exchanges that were taking place in that time. Denis Vladimirovich Yerovoy made violins in the Soviet Union that won high honors, including the top award in an international competition in Italy in 1959. Yerovoy was sent in Ulaanbaatar two or three times between 1966 and 1968 to conduct workshops for students in the Department of Musical Instrument Construction and Repair at the Music and Dance College. 
there were a real complicity and appreciation between Yarawai and his Mongolian peoples, such as De Boran, that we can see in this picture. They shared the wish to bring the Meruru to a higher level, to bring it closer to perfection and to enrich its musicality. Additional changes included the use of violoncello bridges, refinements in the treatment and lacquering of the wood, and the addition of two F-holes on the instrument's face. Yerovoy was the first person who applied general scientific method to the construction of the instrument. He presented his first redesign Murderhor to Jamian in 67 or 68, who promptly took it in a concert tour to Europe. Instrumental parts that were traditionally fashioned with leather or animal skin were replaced with wood, the horsehair strings were replaced with catgut or nylon strings, and the traditional curved bows were replaced with European instrumental bows and so on. By that, the Murderhor became more stable, could remain in tune much longer as the performance context would shift between dry and humid, and also could project its sounds much further, especially in a theater setup. This evolution in the instrument as well as the impregnation of the classical music in the Mongolian music culture gave birth to the famous Murderhor Ensemble. Founded the 9th of July 1992 by Bacholun Tsind, this ensemble is composed with a mix of national instruments such as Murhor, Yatar, Yochin, Eweburé, Ichor, and European instruments such as flute, violoncello, piano, and percussions. Their first performance happened on the 16th of April 1993 at the Academic Opera and Ballet Theatre. They have been performing in numerous countries all around the world and are able to perform complex European pieces such as the Carmen Suit of Georges Bizet. In 2016, at the initiative of the leading Murhorch, Amar Bayer Rinchin, a proposition to implement the traditional skin-fronted Murhor was made in order to revive it. For this occasion, the ensemble organized a concert named Jingin Tsoba fully performed on skin-fronted Murhor. This initiative has produced 14 instruments which have been successfully used for performance not only in Mongolia but also in warm and humid countries such as Thailand, Macau or Japan. The Murhor of the ensemble now carry both wood and skin instruments during their concerts. Of course, there is a lot to talk about the instrument metamorphosis, but I tried here to sum it up as well as I could to give you the main key point that contributed to the Murderhor evolution. Also, if you are interested and want a deeper look into the political aspect that happened during the last century, I would really suggest you to read the publication of Peter Key March named The Horset Fiddle and the Cosmopolitan Reimagination of Tradition in Mongolia, published in 2009. It really contains a lot of incredible information as well as very great testimony of great artists. I also want to express my gratitude to Amar Bayar Renchin, who took the time in his very busy schedule to answer my questions, as well as to give me more detailed information about the Murhor Ensemble. I think that's it for today's episode. I hope that it was interesting and that you enjoyed it. Know that you can join the Ohol community on Discord for more cultural exchange and discussion. Feel free also to like and share this video that will be very supportive for the show. You can also make a donation on my website for that, that will be very helpful. I did also put some interesting links in the description for you to explore. And until next time, may the blessing of the eternal blue sky be upon you.